Despite living on our current sailboat for four years now, we were, for the first time, quite nervous to come back to her after this little break we just had on land. Only because we had a new stowaway in tow. We wondered what it was going to be like now, sailing with two kids. I feared that no one would get any sleep with the rocking of the waves. That I'd forgotten to buy something essential for the kids before we left port. That my seasickness I'd been experiencing since getting pregnant with Lenny many years ago now will have worsened after the birth of our second child. It was nice to untie the lines and learn that all of these fears were just that, fears. And Riley always says not to worry because if the worry happens, you have suffered now twice. We've had the smoothest start to a sailing season yet. My seasickness appears to have almost disappeared. This is big news for us and Riley and I have shared some really special moments on the water lately. Having two crew on board recently as well has helped us immensely. Here's to an epic start to a new adventure. Anyway, slowly but surely, our two little ones are getting back in sync with the ocean. Or perhaps we're getting more in sync with them. But strap in because today's voyage has Riley addressing a little controversy before climbing our mast. Hello everyone. And stripping off layers along with the rest of us as we journey towards warmer waters. And on that note, I'll be catching you guys up to speed on Vagabelle Swim. So for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, you can prep for that summer sunshine in style, baby. <laughs> everyone so I've been awake since four which I've let everyone know this morning but yeah we're heading off we're going to go under the bridge out the channel and down to Palm Beach another stop in Florida we've decided before jumping over to the Bahamas Lenny you ready to go sailing? Yeah! Gonna eat up all your toes! Mm -hmm. What are the sailing conditions today, David? I didn't look again at the weather. I was going to do that, but the wind seems to be a lot more calm today. And the air's warmer. Yeah, Ooh. a little warmer and the sun is just gorgeous. I think we won't have much gust, so it will be a beautiful sail. Mm. Slower, but nicer. Bridge of Lions, Bridge of Lions. This is sailing vessel incognito requesting that you raise your Bridge, <laughs> so that we can go underneath, please. How are you doing, Cap? No next opening isn't going to be till 8.30. So you're going to open at 8.30? At 8.30, Cap. Okay, excellent. Standing by. Off on a new adventure. We are, mate. Yeah, heading south. Beautiful. Thanks for the internet last night. Safe travel. Thank you, you too. Look, the bridge is open for us. Should we go under it? Yeah. Look at the bridge, Mama. The bridge. David and I were approaching and we were like, oh geez, I don't know if we'll fit through there. Really? Yeah, it's that lighthouse over there. We thought it was in the channel. Up like nighttime navigation. Just be very careful, everyone. Everything is extraordinarily misleading. Lenny, let go of my wheel. Just gonna unfurl the jib, then we'll be sailing. <laughs> We forgot to film any of St. Augustine. We'll have to use Google Images. Yeah, we did a terrible job of filming St. Augustine. I went for a couple of runs though, and I did get to see the neighborhoods. Yeah, and I'm not sure if St. Augustine is like cute or if it's spooky. All oh, the okay. houses were so old, and I was certainly creeped out running through the neighborhood. The yeah. old parts of town. Yeah, it's the oldest city in America, apparently. What did you think of St. Augustine, David? Yeah, it was a beautiful city, just a little, yeah. I thought that was mold, but it's, I guess it's avocado or hummus or something. Avocado. Yeah. 
talking to Oceanvolt, which made me think about generators, made me think about all of the flack that we received having taken Greta over the North Atlantic, and things as trivial as misinformation, as sinister as solar panels ultimately are worse for the environment because of the procedure that goes into making it. Even though it's going to work for 20 years, is worse for the environment than if you just burnt fossil fuels, which made me think of the planet of the humans. And I think that Michael Moore might have just done the biggest troll of all time. After I watched that, it felt like he might have gone, okay, how can we get the most extreme people over here finally admit that climate change is a happening thing? It's like he's gone, all right, will you people over here finally believe it if we point out all of the horrendous things that are happening over here, and especially the hypocrisy, which people, that really ruffles people together. They get all excited and semi-aroused by that. That's some of the things that we've been discussing on board and thinking about in our downtime. Tell me what you think about Planet of the Humans and then my theory, was he trolling or not? David, you get anything? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Just yeah. seaweed. Aww. This is why we didn't catch anything. Seaweed! Being on the move again, we're quickly reminded of what's important. Friendships, family, food, safety, having fun. I guess on average, we kind of live the simple life. So much fun sailing, solo. What's wrong, mate? What's wrong, Darwin? We're going nine knots, mate. Elaine has gone down for a sleep. Sarah has gone down for a sleep. David's gone down for a much needed sleep. And um, I'm sailing and looking after two children. With ease, I might add. Life's great when you're not seasick. We're enjoying the sunset. David put out a fishing line without a rod and reel. It's just tied up with a peg so we can hear it if it, we get something. And um, Sarah saw a dolphin today. The kids have been kids. Riley at one stage was looking after Darwin and Lenny while everyone else was asleep and he was sailing. Yeah, super dad. He does it all, this man. What can I say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Darwin? Is he a super dad? Yeah. What did you see? I saw a big sea turtle right here. It's really cool. What well, are we talking about? Whether the green flash is a real thing or not. Never gazed upon the green flash, Master Gibbs. Yeah, we've never seen a green flash. The green flash is a line that comes up as the sun is setting. Yeah, yeah Bradley and I have never seen a green flash. We have friends who have claimed they've seen them multiple times. We've never seen then, one. Uh, We've been out here for so long. I don't know what's going on. Have you guys seen a green flash? Do they exist? Let us know in the comments because I'm not convinced. I reckon everyone's just fibbing. So I'm inside my head. We about to go to bed, Miss Lenny. David and Riley are going to do shift work tonight because with Darwin and Lenny I don't get much sleep so it'd be pretty unfair to make me also do a shift and get no sleep. So yeah we're about to try and go to sleep. It's now 8.30 and poor Sarah's a little bit seasick actually. She was just spewing off the side. It's a pretty rough start to the sail today so I'm surprised I'm feeling good so soon. Thank goodness I am but yes, yeah, Sarah's a bit sick right now, poor girl. So, it's really bad. I'm just trying to make myself wake up more than anything. That's a bit big for you. <laughs> Morning, Papa. Buenos dias, chica. How was your night? Good. Wow. What do you think we're going to have our bed back to ourselves? Wow. 
<laughs> I took the 11 to 3 a.m. shift, then David came on from 3 until 5. He was pretty tired. And then he woke up Sarah, who went from 5 until recently when I woke up again. I've had a pretty good sleep. Nothing but a couple of trawling boats. Although we were pretty much surrounded by trawlers, some good news was that as we ventured further south, we'd be sailing alongside a place known as the Oculina Bank. The Oculina Bank is a natural coral reef that runs from Fort Pierce down to Daytona, starting about 17 miles offshore. It's named after a slow-growing ivory tree coral, which forms massive thickets at depths ranging from 75 to 90 metres. Whilst the area had been severely destroyed by fishing and shrimp trawlers in the past, 397 square nautical miles of this deep water reef system is now federally protected. The first deep water coral reef to be protected in the world. Gropers, amberjacks, snappers, angelfish, butterfly fish and small bass all call this coral reef home. We are coming into our inlet, West Palm Beach. Just dropped all the sails and we're motoring in because there's no sun, so we're using the last little bit to boost batteries before we anchor here for probably two, three days. We were hammering all night. We were sailing at like nine knots, 10 knots, all night long with 15 knots from here. It was just beautiful. So we've done 300 miles down the coast and we had to, I mean, you gotta have your eyes open being this close to the US because there's unmarked Tower. navy towers. We didn't come across any more of them, fortunately, but yeah, there's, it's a busy place, so you, you really gotta have your wits about you. Water's a little choppy coming into the channel, but we were just all telling stories of other shocking channels we've been through, and this is nothing. We are all fine here. There's a little bit of current coming out. As David pointed out, it's much calmer over there, just outside the entrance. They're probably two knots, I'd say. Elena said, I remember this place. This is where all the cruise ships were, and I think you said you'd sell your house if they were gonna sit there polluting your front yard. But I remember there's a, I can see a boat anchored here, and we went to a restaurant up here and had a couple of cocktails. Okay. Three kids, back when we used to have fun. And then there's a, it's a bit of a disaster anchoring around the corner here, but I think that's where we'll go again. Yeah. It's like it gets real shallow, and I don't think the holding's very good. But I mean, this was a long time ago. What are they it's free for all basically you can just go ahead and pick a mooring but it might be someone's mooring oh, <laughs> so he, yeah he says you can maybe use it but if they, someone come up can you we, have to leave can we okay. anchor here yeah we can anchor here he says on the sandbar he says Simple wraps, a smashed egg and avocado, and then a little quinoa salad and some fruit. It's very fresh. No. I love how these pretzel pants accentuate my bulge. Everyone loves an accentuated bulge. We're going up, up. What are you doing? The anchor light's not working, so we're just going to check if there's power to it. Hopefully we can get the anchor light fixed today because when we're in the more deserted places where there's less light from the cities, it is hard to spot other boats in the middle of the night when there's no moon, it's just pitch black. Around here it's pretty lit up, but yeah, it'd be nice when we're in the Bahamas to be visible in the night. Hello everyone, we're just on top of the mast. That's the anchor light. That's the boat. We 
we've been in touch with these, they're both actors, Alexis and Carlos. Meet some very interesting people just through the world wide web. Doing what we're doing, so many people want to escape and jump on a boat and do what we're doing. So um, because of that, yeah, we met. She'll probably hate this, but I know Alexis from Spy Kids, the movie Spy Kids. She's the, the sister. Oh, I love Spy Kids when I was a kid. Used to want the whole set. I used to get mum to buy me it for Christmas, like the little um, earpieces where you can listen really well and <laughs> just all that dorky spy stuff. But yeah, she was the actor in that. Turns out they're just over here. They bought a big sailboat, a big cat. Doesn't have the mast on it right now, but it will. They got three gorgeous kids, two boys, one girl all about Lenny's age so we caught up with them today after all these years of talking online and they're awesome they're also going to do um, family vlogs on their boat so I'll link them below to check out you are okay we're in a minivan we have to go get rapid COVID tests um, thankfully Lex and Carlos have lent us their minivan lol minivan life Lenny can you say minivan life closing my nose I will I will I will we don't go back that far. Now the next one. All right, and you're all set. <sighs> in 20 minutes, <laughs> okay? Okay, thank you. How'd you go? Totally fine. But less harsh when you do the rapid test. I was motoring back from over there and he started, he looked a bit odd at the front. And I, I thought the sun was in his eyes because he was he kept blinking, so I put my hat on his head. And then I grabbed him and he just fell asleep in like three seconds. I was motoring back. It took me ages because I couldn't play because I wanted to keep him asleep. And then I just lay him down there. And he is zonked. You had a bit of sleep, didn't you? As always, thank you for watching that one, guys. I just wanted to end this episode to talk about my bikinis. I'm really excited that we're sailing south and it's getting warmer. I'm gonna be living in bikinis soon enough and um, we still have some up for sale. So I'll put the link in the description below. It'd be really cool if you picked up a pair. They're actually on sale now. And um, yeah, just a bit of an update. We're working on our new collection, which I'm so excited to release. It's still gonna be a little while yet. We're a two-man team. Me and Ava doing these bikinis, having a lot of fun, but yeah, it's time consuming, but we love it. <laughs> and thanks to everyone who's picked up a pair so far. We'd love to see you in them. Please hashtag Vagabelle Swim on Instagram or tag us so we can see it. Or you can submit your photo on our Vagabelle Swim website. Thanks guys. Love you all so much. We'll see you next week. <laughs>